Lisa Rigazio, the assistant principal here at Radcliffe. We are so excited this evening. We are hosting a family reading night uh, from 5 to 6.30. Some of the activities that's going to happen is we've got a couple of workshops for parents to attend. Then we've got some reading activity rooms that the kids can attend. And then our book fair is also going on. So we are so excited for our families and community to come into the building tonight with us at Radcliffe Elementary School. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. Let's see what happened. <gasps> How embarrassing. She didn't land very gracefully on the branch, did she? I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. Hi. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warmed Flitter. We had better go home, or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and drooped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said. Why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, said Stella Luna. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down. I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up, said the creature. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. She found her mom. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived. Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid. 
but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. As Stella Luna could see, she felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much fruit as she could hold. I'll ever, never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Hey, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped for a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flat nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike? mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike? wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. So I have a couple of questions for you. The first question is, do any of you have something, a really good friend, but you have different things about each other? that you like something and your friend doesn't like? Scarlett. Um, what do you like? Swings. You like the swings? Do you have a friend who doesn't like the swings? No. Okay. They, they like the slide a lot. They like the slide a lot. Okay, good. How about you? Uh, 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 
Good. The bird eats bugs and the bat eats fruits. Um, how are they alike? Anybody know how the, the bat and the bird were the same? Yeah. Scarlett. Oh, good. So the bat can see at night, but the bird can't. How are they the same? What could both of them do? What could both of them do? Gabby. They could both fly. So they both had what? Wings. Wings. Okay, so there are ways that they're the same, and then there's ways that they're different. So I'm going to help you. Have. Go ahead and start on your craft. The first thing is you'll want to cut out the shapes and then glue it on some construction paper. Hi, I'm Mrs. Kazarovich. Um, tonight is our family engagement night for reading. Uh, I read to the students the book Stella Luna. Uh, it is about a bat who, a baby bat who um, gets attacked by an owl and gets away from her mother and has to be raised with baby birds. Um, and it talks about the differences between the birds and the bats and um, how they were still able to be friends at the end. The students right now are working on a craft that is a Venn diagram to show the differences and the likenesses between birds and bats. Um, really important to um, read for reading comprehension for the children to come out and it's very exciting to see the parents getting involved as well. Um, good project for our community engagement. Name ways to ensure the home environment encourages learning. Um, I don't know. So, take it about. Team two oh. gets to start. Yeah. Stop talking about this. Books in the house. Structure. Mm -hmm. Having books <laughs> in the house. Stuff like books. Okay, which one are we starting with? Books. Books in the house. third grade 
and uh, this is Radcliffe Elementary, and we just did a class trivia. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's Pink mini dots made quite a splash. Pink Vashti Pink noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish Pink I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? Oh no, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew the line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle and then she said, what do you think she said? What do you think she said? I can't think. That's okay. What do you think she said? Now you sign it. Now you sign it. Let's see. And then she said, please sign it. Now tell me how you think that made that boy feel. Happy. Happy. Yeah. He gave him a little bit of confidence. So what is the name of our book? Oh, dot. The dot. What did you learn from the dot? What did you learn from the dot? Okay, you always have to sign it. What else did you learn from the dot? Um, to keep trying. To keep trying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love that answer. Anybody else have anything to add? What? Be creative. I'm sorry? Be creative. Be creative with what? A little bit of dot. Well, that's what we're getting ready to do. We're going to be creative with dots. I have little dots. I have big dots. No. And I have these little dauber dot thingies. So you can come up here. We're going to call one table at a time. You come get materials. And you and your mom, dad, grandma, whoever you're here with, be creative in making your dot. Everybody understand what we're doing? Yes. All right. Awesome. challenge. Before today, I just hadn't found a book I wanted to read. I hadn't found the words or the pictures or the pages or the sentences or the subjects that showed me, me. So last night, I wrote a book. It's called My Very Favorite Book in the Whole Wide World. It's about a big, fat, bumpy journey to finding the perfect book. My book has words and pictures and pages that show me, me. And that shows you, me. When I started reading my book out loud for everyone to hear, I struggled. But soon my words began to flow. The pictures I drew danced off the pages. Everyone can have a very favorite book in the whole wide world, even if you have to write it yourself. When I was done telling my story, all my classmates clapped and cheered. And my teacher gave me a gold star on my homework. And that is the truth. And that is the end of my very favorite book in the whole wide world. So your activity that you have is a blank book for you to write your own story that you would love to read to somebody else or that you would love to read yourself. It doesn't have to be about you. It could be about a family activity that you all do together or just about chocolate. That's what 
We all love, right? Hi guys, my name is Miss Ruth and I am a fourth grade teacher here at Radcliffe Elementary. Today during our family reading night, I read my very favorite book in the whole wide world. This is Henley's journey as he tries to find his favorite book for a class assignment. And he doesn't really like to read because some of the words are too hard or the sentences are too long. So this is his journey about how he finally finds his very favorite book, one that he wrote himself. Good evening, my name is Daryl Deloach. I'm here for the Radcliffe Elementary School reading, reading night. Um, Lisa Sturman is the best principal ever, especially to put on this stuff for, for all the parents. It's a great opportunity to see some of the things that the kids get to do here at Radcliffe Elementary School. Hi, I'm Lisa Sturman, principal at Radcliffe Elementary. I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. We had a wonderful time. We had our first family reading event of the season. Uh, parents got to come in. We had choices of book reading, different levels, intermediate and primary. We also had a parent workshop about families as partners where we got to play Family Feud and win some games or win some prizes. Um, and then we also had our book fair where parents could come in and shop or just browse and then have their kiddos come in and shop the next day. Um, we were really excited. We had some generous donations from the community. Um, for some $25 gift packages so parents have an opportunity to win. And we'll make that drawing tomorrow morning and get that announced in Dojo. So again, thank you all for coming out. This was exciting and we can't wait for the next one.